Okay, we're on part two of our lease. We should be on page five of the lease. Um, let's go down to utilities. We're, we're going over the highlights here. If at any point we've glossed over something that you have a question about, by all means, you need to make contact with this office and ask us any questions you have. Anyone here would be happy to answer those questions. Utilities. Um, you're going to be responsible for all the utilities. Premier Properties will not pay any of the utilities, so you'll be responsible to have them all on before your targeted commencement date. So make sure all your utilities are on. If you move in and you don't have electricity, uh, that is not Premier Properties' responsibility. That was your responsibility to have that on uh, before prior to move in. Use of occupancy, number 12. This is a, a list of all the occupants, and that should include the kids and their age if you do have children. Um, we do have to have... Uh, Phone numbers, emails, HOA rules. If there are any HOA rules, um, you know, we'll, we'll be sure and let you know of, of anything that needed to happen on that or prohibitions. Okay, let's go to page five. Let's go to page six. Talk about guests. Um, if you're going to have a guest more than 10 days, this is uh, section E on that at the top of page six. Um, we do have a requirement that if you have a guest more than 10 days, you do notify us so that we can, uh, just for... Uh, purposes of not wanting to startle anyone. If you happen to be at work and not there and we needed to come and do any sort of repair or anything like that, uh, we don't want to be there and startle someone we did not know was going to be staying, say a grandmother was going to stay for the summer, something like that. Again, we don't care. We just need to be, we do need to know if someone's going to stay there more than uh, uh, 30 days. Parking rules. Um, can I have any more than three vehicles visible? So, um, if you have a garage, uh, in some instances of condos or townhomes, there may be less than that. There might be two, but on a standard house, it is three. That means visible. If you have more than three cars, you need to put something in the garage, uh, or you need to, uh, you know, you just cannot have more than three visible. Um, one of the reasons, one of the ways we do find this out is by, uh, you know, neighbors calling or something like that. So just keep that down. Uh, go in by access by landlord. This is not your property. This property does belong uh, to a third party that Premier Properties is managing. Uh, them or us as the landlord do have permission to, to enter the property at any point. If we feel necessary, we are allowed to access. It does say we can access without warning. I will let you know. If we are accessing the property and you have not been notified we're coming, that means that we're not getting any responses from you. Uh, for some reason, you're not responding to emails or, or something like that. But uh, we do have access. There is a trip charge. If we are trying to gain access to the property and you're not allowing us access, uh, we are allowed to uh, uh, charge you a trip charge of $50. Uh, key box on the door, going from there. The last day of your, the last month of your lease, whenever that is. You may live here five years, 10 years. I don't know how long you're going to live here. But once you do give notice and tell us that you are going to be uh, leaving the property. The last 30 days of that lease, as the bottom of page six and go on to top, to top of page seven, we're allowed to market the property. Some of you may have viewed properties that you could tell someone lived at. You can't refuse showings. You have to allow us to do it. In section two, you are allowed to pay us an additional amount of rent, depending on whatever your rent is. You can pay us an additional month's rent, and we will not, on top of your normal rent and your deposit, and we will not show the property the last 30 days. It's your choice to do that. Um, they cannot go without a, a, uh, a licensed real estate agent to see it, but you do have the option if you don't want someone to see it. If you're not going to take that option, you have to allow us to show the property, and you cannot refuse any showings. It's sometimes a little inconvenient, but it is not your property. It doesn't belong to you or us, and you cannot, I stress that again, cannot refuse the showings. Uh, the move-in condition, this is considered an as-is property. So the way you're getting the property, it is as-is. That's the way that you're, uh, um, if there's anything that needs to be repaired or something like that, that you can let us know, but you are, you did see the property and you're accepting it as-is. Uh, part B of move-in condition, that's the seven, that number seven is the number of days that we require for you to get back that inventory and condition form that you received. That's your check-in form. The main thing about that, that is not a work repair. That is an inventory and condition. You're to take that and mark anything you see where you do not want to get charged for it on your rent or on your deposit. So if there's a mark on a floor or on a wall or something like that, that's a good place to mark that down. If the stove's not working, don't mark it on your inventory condition form. Call us at Premier Properties. That's something that we'll take up separately. Move out condition, uh, that's pretty. Uh, that's the next part we'll go to as we go to step three. So we're going to pause right here. We'll go to section three and continue on.